A University of Minnesota Duluth virtual summit will discuss being anti-racist. The three-day summit runs next Tuesday through Thursday. How can we all be cognizant of practicing being anti-racist in our everyday lives? And why is that important? Joining us now is Sean Bedard Parker, summit organizer and UMD accreditation director. And Susanna Paleo Woodward is the director of UMD's Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Thank you both for being here. Interesting topic. Let's get right to it because I know it's going to be a busy week for you people next week. So, uh, Sean, what is the upcoming uh, summit all about and what can people expect if they plug into it? Well, the Commission on Equity, uh, Race and Ethnicity has this annual summit and our goal is to meet the needs of certainly the larger uh, two ports, twin ports community, as well as our UMD uh, student staff and faculty needs. And the, the theme of this summit is being anti-racist, doing anti-racism. And so what our team came up with, the commission, decided to target not only the idea of not being anti-racist, but how do we go about being better community members? Essentially, to be an anti-racist mm -hmm. is to adopt a posture that everyone is welcome in the community and that we refuse to allow the seeds of disrespect to foment and encourage us to separate ourselves. I liked your choice of words. You said doing anti-racism. What does that mean? It means not simply taking uh, a rather stated position in, uh, quietly and saying, we're this may exist, but I don't need to be a part. To be an anti-racist is not necessarily to do it, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. Doing it means that you refuse to accept the status quo, that you actively engage in practices that encourage that community engagement mm -hmm. for all of us. Susanna, can you define for us anti-racism? What does it boil down to? Well, I mean, it, it, what we're hoping is that it will be an opportunity for people to engage to ask that question, where is the root causes of racism and the impact on people, especially BIPOC people in our community? So being anti-racist is asking that question. First thing that's in personal, mm -hmm. like what, what, what is my prejudices? What is the, my racist thoughts that I have? I mean, we are product of this society and culture. And then asking that question and questioning institutional racism racism that we see that happens in, in the actions that people have or make, uh, and asking those questions to yeah. then moving forward to say, okay, what, what is my role as a community member of the, of the Duluth community, the university, to create change and start asking questions and being able to stop that. The summit will be virtual. Can those who are attending virtually then plug into talking to those of you who are in charge of the summit? Can they ask questions? Can they make statements? Yes, uh, they'll be through the more every day. They'll be, uh, we'll have, mm, Tuesday we'll have a keynote speaker as well as on Wednesday. And there'll be a time where people will be able to ask questions. Mm -hmm. We also will have other workshops and breakout sessions uh, where people will be able to engage in conversation. For example, after each keynote speaker, we'll have a, a session where those that would like to engage in conversation to yeah. talk more about what they learn about the keynote. Mm -hmm. Sean, can a person be racist without even realizing it? I think so. And the commission takes the stance that racist practices are not something that are outside us. We live in a society that in its own way has allowed some things to be. We have institutions that were built by certain people with certain agendas historically, and that unwittingly sometimes we've all become part of this machinery that keeps it going. Mm -hmm. And we weren't born racist, so what happened to us? Is, is it a learned experience? It is, it is a belief that, that we have that is a learned behavior. And because it's learned behavior, it can be unlearned. And, but it has to be recognized to be unlearned. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, uh, Susanna, can you give us an example, maybe of, uh, of how people might be racist and they don't even know they are? Well, you know, sometimes, as you said, that is uh, something that we learn. It is, I, it's, we call it, there is a socialization that happens. And sometimes we learn those behaviors even from the people that love us the most, our parents, our grandparents, institutions like uh, churches, uh, schools. Uh, and, and so sometimes you learn in this, I mean, even by not learning the history of this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I uh, have taught many 
years at the university and it saddens me when I find students when they said, how come it's the first time that I'm learning about the history of slavery? I didn't understand that. How come I have never learned about the history of the indigenous people of this community? Sure. So. How do you yourself practice being anti-racist? It's an everyday work. I mean, it's everyday asking It takes concentration? Questions. Well, it's just asking those questions to be actually, to be able to always be thinking about why, what is the reason that is this happening? And something that I'm always, as from the beginning, teaching my children, you know, and uh, making sure that they understand that our differences yeah. are important and there's a lot of value in it and making sure that we acknowledge and be respectful sure. and asking those questions. And when we see racist behavior, if we, we to ask, and to, be, and to intervene. Sean, what do you hope the summit accomplishes? One of the things that I have, and I will say this personally, is I hope that the people who attend are not necessarily people who just agree with us. We want people to attend who want to engage in questions that are uncomfortable. We want people to ask hard questions of themselves and of the speakers. That's how we all learn. You, you can't grow if everything is comfortable and you assume you know it all. Yeah. And so that's what we're, I'm hoping especially uh, takes place. Susanna, you've been here for several years. What kind of progress have you seen in the Northland where maybe there is some change that's recognizable out there? Uh, I could tell well, there is many. I mean, at the university, sometimes I, you know, sometimes the students say there is no progress. And I say, oh, if I could just tell you stories of the changes that you've I have seen, seen through the time. You know, the diversification of our enrollment of students, uh, of our faculty and staff, uh, the courses and majors that students can actually major. In the city of Duluth, I mean, we have now several commissions. Uh, yeah. Before it was only the, the NLACP that we were able to go to, and now we have a commission of human rights. We have an African American Heritage Commission. Uh, I mean, I, th I have seen many changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we still have long ways to go. Oh yes, yes, I'm sure we do here. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little rundown now of what's going to take place at the summit and when and where? Well, the summit is virtual, and so we are asking people to go on our site and register. And so we will have uh, Tim Weiss will speak on Tuesday. He will be a, an opening speaker. On Wednesday, we have Dr. Uh, Ibram Kendi, who will have uh, a very good uh, guest speaker statement and engagement to have, and then a number of workshops. Uh, that will happen Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll have a number of organizations that people can engage and talk to that are committed to the same product. It sounds like you are well prepared. We, we hope we are. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Sean Bedard Parker and Susanna uh, Paleo Woodward, thank you both for being here. All the best with the upcoming thank summit. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You very thank you very much.